Okay, the next thing we're going to do is save our protein structure. Uh, and when we do this, we want to remove all of the water, magnesium, sulfate, uh, ATP, uh, etc. Because those require a bit more expert use of the molecular dynamics software. We are, however, going to add water back in eventually. Um, but we want to do that in a sort of prescribed kind of way and not use the existing water that was part of the crystal structure. So the way we're going to do this is from what's called a command line. And in BMD, we find that in this main menu under the extensions menu, there is something called TK console. If we click on that, it will open this console window. And this is telling us a couple of things immediately. We're in a, the main console window and we're in a directory on our computer called VMD. This is actually where VMD was installed. And if I were to type ls to get the listing of the directory where we are currently in this console, it would give us a list of files. And if you went into Windows Explorer and found your way into this VMD folder that's somewhere probably in your main hard drive under Program Files, University of Illinois, and then in a folder called BMD, you should see all of these folders and files there. What we want to do is get out of this and get into our folder casing kinase that's in my documents. To do that, we need to know where that is, but we, we do know that we're going to need to move out of this directory. To do that, we can move upward towards the main directory of the hard drive by simply typing cd for change directory and two periods, so c cd dot dot and if we do that, we've moved up a directory into the University of Illinois. We can do that again. Now we see that we're in program files. Do that a third time and now we're in the main hard drive folder which is typically called the C drive on a Windows uh, PC. What we can do now is we can get the directory listing again if we aren't sure where we are. And we can see that there are quite a few folders here. The folders are noted because they have a slash after them. Files are noted because they have a period and then a file extension. What we want to do is go into the users folder. So down here, we need to click to make sure we're at this command prompt here. I'm going to type cd users, and it is case sensitive usually with Windows. So it's capital U-S-E-R-S. -E now I'm in that. I can do a directory listing again with ls, enter. And I want to go into my directory here, which is called T Messina. So I'm going to type CD T Messina. If I get a directory listing again, I can see that there is a folder called Documents that corresponds to my documents. So I'm going to type CD Documents capitalized again. And one last time I'll do a directory listing and I see I have my folder casing kinase here so I can change directory into that directory. Again there are no spaces and it's case sensitive and if I one last time get the directory listing I see that there's my PDB file. Now I took that step by step. If you knew where everything was you could have simply typed something like cd dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash that would have taken you up into the C hard drive main directory and you could have typed users your username and documents and casein kinase and if I were still in the VMD folder and I simply entered this single command that would take me into the folder that I'm currently sitting in uh, but since I took you step by step, I'm not going to do that. That's just the quick way if you happen to know exactly where you sit relative to where you want to be in the Windows directory structure. Okay, 
So that was a lot that actually didn't do much for us as far as saving our protein structure, but it did get us to where it's going to save the protein structure in the proper location so we know where to find it. So the next thing we want to do is uh, create a variable that's going to store all of the protein structure coordinates, those x, y's, and z's. So I'm going to set a variable that I call csn. So set is a keyword saying I'm going to set this variable. The variable is called csn. And then in square brackets, I'm going to type atom select. That's going to select the atoms of, of a structure that I have open in VMD. And the structure that I want to select from is the top structure. If I move this window out of the way, I can make sure that I only have one structure open. That means that this one, the one CSN is on top. If it weren't, I could click this T to bring it to the top if I had multiple structures open. But I only have this one, so top is going to select that, that one structure, which is 1CSN.pdb. Now, like I say, I only want to save the protein portions of the structure and leave out all of the water, ATP, sulfate, and magnesium. And so to do that, I type select only the atoms from the top structure. So I'm selecting atoms from the top structure that correspond to protein. Now BMD knows which ones correspond to protein because if you look at the PDB file, you'll notice that anything associated with protein is denoted with a label called ATOM in all caps, A-T-O-M. And all of the other things like water and ATP are denoted with something that's called heteroatom or H-E-T-A-T-M in all caps. And so it knows to distinguish between the two by that. So that's one of the things that are in the PDB file that don't seem obvious, but it's one of the ways that programs know how to deal with the various things that are in those files. Okay, so if I hit enter, it now tells me that I have an atom selection, and that atom selection is stored in this variable CSN. I can next grab all of the contents that are in that variable by putting a dollar sign in front. So the dollar sign says grab everything that is contained in this variable, which are the protein atom coordinates, and I'm going to write those to a PDB file using the command write PDB, and I want to save that to a file called CSN P for protein dot PDB. And it doesn't tell me anything, but I can navigate to find that, so I can open a Windows Explorer window, I can go into my documents, casing kinase, and I see csnp.pdb, so I know that it has saved that file for me. And it's a file that's slightly smaller than the one from the protein data bank, which tells me that it probably did actually only save the protein and left out all of those other things that we weren't interested in keeping. I will point out, if we wanted to keep, say, only the ATP and get rid of everything else, I could have set a variable called CSNATP, for example. We can title this anything we want. Usually it's helpful to make it something that is meaningful to us so we remember it. Um, but I can set a variable called CSNATP, type atom select top. And then in curly brackets, if I want to do more than just the protein, I can say protein or res name ATP. We're not actually going to use this. I just want to give you an another example of how you could save more than uh, just the protein. You could use the ATP. You could use everything except for the water if you wanted to, uh, simply by using logic such as ors and ands like this. Okay, so I'm going to set this variable, and then, again, with the dollar sign, CSN ATP, I'm going to write a PDB file called csnatp.pdb. And I can go back to 
my Windows Explorer and I see that there's one here. It's slightly bigger than the one that was protein only, indicating that there's something extra in that file, which corresponds to the ATP. Now, in the next video, we will open these files to check and make sure that they actually do have the contents that we expect. That is, in this file there's protein only, no water, no sulfate, no magnesium. In this file, protein only and ATP. Okay, so that's how you save a file in VMD.